Hello everybody. Today we'll be talking about what is a spectrograph and how to interpret a spectrograph. So why are spectrographs even required? Now when you have sound waves in real life, they can be comprised of multiple frequencies. Now in a very ideal situation, you can have a pure tone generator that generates one single frequency at a time. But then in real life, when you're recording, let's say, sound in an environment, you probably will have multiple frequencies present that sound. So how do we analyze what kind of frequencies are present at sound? That's where the spectrograph comes into play. Because we intend to analyze what kinds of, you know, what frequencies are making up those sound waves. And a spectrograph clearly displays, you know, what frequencies are, you know, present in that given sound signal. So let's talk about that in greater detail and let's start with the basics. So first is time domain. Now, time domain refers to the analysis of signals with respect to time. So, you know, the x-axis is always time. So you can see a picture of a random signal and it has been captured for three seconds as evident from the picture. So, you know, the time domain is with respect to time. So the signal can be anything. It can be an acoustic signal or a vibration signal, but then you know, the y-axis can change depending on the type of signal, but then the x-axis is always the same, which is time. So for acoustic signals, it's a plot of pressure along the y-axis versus time along the x-axis. And in this case, the pressure is a linear scale and not the decibel scale. And for vibration signals, it's a plot of acceleration versus time. Next is the frequency domain. So the frequency domain refers to analysis of signals with respect to frequency. So the x-axis is no longer time, but one over time or frequency expressed in hertz. So frequency graph shows how much of the signal lies within each given frequency band or range of frequencies. Now basically what it displays is what kind of you know, signal, what kind of frequencies are present in a given signal or in a given sound wave. So for acoustic signals, the frequency graph is a plot of pressure along the y-axis versus frequency along the x-axis. Now it is important to note that the pressure is no longer the Pascal of the linear scale, but a logarithmic scale. Because uh, in the linear scale, we, we are, you know, we are capable of hearing something from micropascal to billions of Pascal. So it's really difficult to plot that big of a range in a graph. Hence we, so, you know, go to the decibel scale, which is pretty compact. And for vibration signals, the graph is still a plot of acceleration versus frequency. The most important takeaway is that the x-axis is the frequency. Okay, now we have studied about time domain and frequency domain, but how does the conversion happen? You know, how does you how do you convert from the time domain to frequency domain? That's where the Fourier transform comes into play. Now let's talk about what is a Fourier transform. So any given signal can be converted between time and frequency domain with a pair of mathematical operators called transforms. And one such transform is the Fourier transform. It converts a time function into a, you know, complex value sum of signs of different frequencies with amplitudes and phases. So the inventor, according to Joseph Fourier, any function could be, you know, produced as an infinite sum of signs and cosine waves. So one of one such Fourier transform is a fast Fourier transform, you know, it removes duplicated terms in the algorithm to reduce the number of mathematical operations performed. It's widely used in, you know, engineering music and it was also included in the top 10 algorithms by the IEEE magazine. So what does the Fourier transform do? It basically converts the time domain into the frequency domain. So if you have a time signal like this, you know, we really cannot make out what, what frequency is this, we don't know. Uh, but the Fourier transform helps us in that aspect. It clearly pinpoints us what, what frequency is this signal made up of. Now I know the signal is one kilohertz, but let's, you know, let's listen and let's look at the Fourier transform. So this isn't the time domain because the x-axis is time and the y-axis is pressure in the linear scale. So I played the sound and now we'll listen to, we'll look at this spectrum or the spectrograph. So we can clearly see that there is one single line at one kilohertz. And that's, you know, that's the Fourier transform of this signal. So you have, this is in the time domain and this is in the frequency domain. So this is, if you see a, a single line in the spectrograph, it clearly means that it's a pure tone. 
this is a complicated signal because I have uh, mixed two signals together. So the frequency spectrum should show me two lines. Um, so let's have a look at it. So as you can see here, there are two lines at 1000 Hertz and 2000 Hertz, which clearly tells me that there are two frequencies present in this given time signal. Now, similarly, this is a square wave. Now, square wave is a combination of multiple sine waves. So if you take lots of sine waves and start adding them together, you will end up with a square wave. If you want to know how that happens, you can check the link in the description below where I've, you know, explained that in a video, separate video about what, uh, how a square wave is formed. So let's listen to the square wave. And this is how it sounds like. And if you can look at the frequency spectrum, we can see multiple lines because it's a combination of multiple frequencies or multiple sine waves. This is an impulsive signal. Now, impulsive signal lasts for a very short duration. Now, one thing to note that if something is very short in the time domain, it's going to be pretty broad in the frequency domain. So you can listen to the sound now. And now if you look at the spectrum, you see that it's pretty broad because it was so short in the time domain that it's so broad and the free, you know, based on the Fourier transform of such a signal, you end up with a broad frequency spectrum. Now this is white noise, so it's random noise and it includes every single frequency from 20 to 20 kilohertz, which means, you know, it's clearly evident that the frequency spectrum should also reflect that, but let's see it anyway. So this is a frequency spectrum. It includes all the frequencies from 20 to 20 kilohertz. Now here's a human whistle. So I recorded myself whistling and I just was curious to check what the frequency is. So let's listen to it and let's look at the frequency spectrum. So this is how it sounds like. And this is the frequency spectrum. Now I might be wondering what the peak on the left side is. So that is just the, you know, the air blowing uh, out of my mouth, but you don't have to look at that, but you know, we can look at the peaks, which is around 2000 Hertz and there are several harmonics. So I purposefully didn't uh, filter the low frequency noise so as to just to show you, uh, you know, you might see something like this in the spectrums and you don't have to, uh, you know, get startled or confused because you can know that that's not part of the whistle, the part of, because the whistle sounds like a pure tone and it should look something like a peak. And that's clearly represented in the spectrum. So to conclude, frequency domain refers to the analysis of signals with respect to frequency. The x-axis is always frequency. A frequency domain graph shows how much of the signal lies within each given frequency or a, a range of frequencies. So it not only tells you what frequencies are present, but also tells you that to what extent those frequencies are making an impact. And that's where the y-axis or the amplitude plays a role because as, let's say a sound has like 1000 hertz and many other frequencies, but 1000 hertz has more impact and that's clearly explained by the frequency spectrum. And you know it can give us a very intuitive understanding of the behavior of the system. All right, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.